Good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy's Counterterrorism Lecture Series. I'm Aaron Zellin, the Gloria and Ken Levy Senior Fellow in the Reinhardt Program on Counterterrorism and Intelligence. Before beginning, I'd like to thank my colleagues, such as Devora Margolin, who first spearheaded this event and also just came out with a new article about ISIS in Syria that you should all read on our website, um, as well as Matthew Levitt, who directs our CT program, and Dana Struhl, our new Director of Research. Big thanks also to our research assistants who helped plan this, Alana, Camille, and Delaney. Finally, I wanted to thank Corey and Katie for the tech setup, George for the editing assistance, and Carolina for the social media outreach. Five years after the Islamic State lost its territorial control in Syria, um, an enduring defeat has yet to be achieved. In Iraq, the organization may be at its weakest point since its inception, um, but it has continued a low-level insurgency next door in Syria uh, and is working to free tens of thousands of members and sympathizers still detained in prison and precariously situated in IDP camps. Further afield in its self-declared external provinces, uh, the group has seized new territories in Mali, Mozambique, and Somalia, as well as established external operations headquarters in Afghanistan for planning terrorist attacks abroad. What do these developments mean for the U.S.-led campaign to defeat the Islamic State? To discuss current challenges and next steps, the Washington Institute is pleased to introduce Ian McCary, who joined the State Department's Counterterrorism Bureau as the Deputy Special Envoy uh, to the Global Coalition to Defeat ISIS in September uh, 2022. Previously, he served as the Charge of Affairs for the Afghanistan Affairs Unit in Qatar um, and Deputy Chief of Mission at the U.S. Embassy in Kabul. His distinguished Foreign Service uh, career also includes prominent posts in Pakistan, Tunisia, Iraq, Morocco, Egypt, Indonesia, and Saudi Arabia, among others. Following the Deputy uh, Special Envoy McCary's remarks, I'll be moderating a question and answer session to dig deeper into these topics. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, thanks, Aaron. Uh, and thanks to the Washington Institute uh, for hosting me here today. Uh, as Aaron mentioned, I sit in the State Department's Counterterrorism Bureau. Uh, and I'm currently serving as the Deputy Special Envoy to the Global Coalition to Defeat ISIS. On March 23rd, 2019, almost exactly five years ago to the day, the coalition and its local partners liberated the final stretch of territory controlled by ISIS in Baghouz, Syria. This was and remains a milestone in our continued efforts to ensure that ISIS cannot resurge. We're here today to mark the fifth anniversary of this moment, the territorial defeat of ISIS, an accomplishment which continues to protect the United States and our allies and partners, and which has improved the lives of millions in the region. As we commemorate the fifth anniversary of the territorial defeat of ISIS, and as we also approach the coalition's upcoming 10th anniversary, I'd like to reflect today on four factors. First, how the United States led the formation of the coalition to defeat ISIS. Second, our progress over the past five years since the liberation of Baghouz. Third, the evolving nature of the ISIS threat. And fourth, I'd like to preview some of our thinking on where the coalition goes from here. Above all, I'd emphasize that as leaders of the coalition, we are clear-eyed about the continuing threat ISIS poses, and we remain highly engaged in this endeavor. I'm constantly impressed by the commitment uh, and determination of our allies and partners to achieve ISIS's enduring defeat, even as competing issues increasingly crowd the international agenda. We continue to see a real threat in Iraq and Syria where ISIS at one point controlled a region with a population of approximately 10 million. And uh, we've seen the uh, emergence of ISIS affiliates, uh, the so-called uh, ISIS Khorasan inside Afghanistan, which poses an external threat, and in Sub-Saharan Africa, where multiple ISIS affiliates have emerged. I'll come back to the current state of the fight a little later but let's reflect for a few minutes on the past 10 years. 
The Global Coalition to Defeat ISIS was formed in September 2014 with 12 original members. By December 2014, it had grown to 60 members. Today, the coalition includes 87 members, bringing together countries from every continent. Through coalition action, we achieved the territorial defeat of uh, ISIS in Iraq and Syria. We've eliminated or captured leadership on multiple occasions. We've significantly reduced ISIS's ability to carry out attacks in Iraq, Syria, and elsewhere. And through the coalition, the international community has invested billions of dollars in stabilizing and helping to revive liberated areas. This progress is a testament to the strength of the coalition and the courage of our partners on the ground. 2014 saw the precipitous fall of Mosul and the seizure of territory stretching from Northwest Syria to the outskirts of Baghdad. To push back, the international community came together to form our global coalition, and we created Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve, OIR, under coalition auspices. From its inception, our military response was robust. In its first year, OIR conducted over 8,000 airstrikes against ISIS targets in Iraq and Syria. Between 2014 and 2017, ISIS lost 95% of its territory. By uh, July 2017, Mosul was once again under the control of the Iraqi government. And by December 2017, ISIS had lost all control of territory in Iraq. The fight continued in Syria, where ISIS held on to strips of territory until 2019. When the coalition and partner forces reclaimed ISIS's final territorial stronghold in Baghuz, this was a decisive blow to an horrific terrorist organization, which had brutalized millions, but many challenges remained and new phases were to emerge. Since 2019, the coalition has continued to work assiduously toward the enduring defeat of ISIS and OIR remains in the region to advise, assist, and enable local partners. There's still much more to be done. The foremost line of effort continues to be in Iraq and Syria, where the coalition uh, continues, uh, is, excuse me, is promoting and coordinating stabilization assistance for liberated areas and their populations. With our partners, the coalition has had remarkable success in restoring stability to areas free from ISIS with a coordinated assistance following directly in the footsteps of military operations, restoring a sense of normalcy for millions of Syrians and Iraqis. However, there are still critical gaps in essential services, uh, food insecurity, intercommunal tension, tenuous security conditions, lack of op economic opportunity on the ground, and regime repression in areas still controlled by Assad. All of these factors fuel local grievances on which ISIS feeds and recruits. The coalition has provided hundreds of millions of dollars in stabilization assistance annually, adding up to billions of dollars invested over the past five years. This, this support meets critical needs that Syrians and Iraqis have themselves identified. It addresses vulnerabilities previously exploited by ISIS and closes gaps in local needs, including for essential services, education, community re reintegration, and accountability for ISIS's heinous crimes. In the past year alone, the coalition collectively pledged $597 million worth of stabilization assistance for liberated areas in Iraq and Syria almost reaching our $601 million target. In addition to this assistance, coalition partners have made notable progress in repatriating foreign terrorist fighters and associated family members that remain in Northeast Syria, reducing through repatriations, the populations of displaced persons in camps like Al Hol, which has 43,000 people. And of course the detention centers holding nearly 9,000 ISIS fighters 
is essential to reducing the risk of an ISIS resurgence. In 2023, nearly 5,500 individuals were repatriated or returned to their countries of origin from Northeast Syria. This figure includes more than 4,000 Iraqis and individuals from 20 other countries. In February of this year, 99 displaced women and children from Al Hol and Al Roj camps returned home to Kyrgyzstan, enabling rehabilitative support and their reintegration into society. Though we're making progress on repatriations, we continue to call on governments to repatriate their nationals from Northeast Syria, because again, repatriations are our single most important tool for preventing an ISIS resurgence. And even as we've achieved significant progress, the coalition has been adapting to keep pace with the evolving and increasingly diffuse nature of the threat. Security situation throughout the Sahel and other parts of Africa has deteriorated significantly in the past several years. Increasingly frequent deadly attacks from ISIS affiliates have rav ravaged communities. Women and children have been kidnapped in the Lake Chad Basin. Soldiers attacked while guarding critical water infrastructure in Burkina Faso. Farmers ambushed in the DRC's North Kivu province. These are just a few of far too many examples. Today, Africa is the location of nearly half of the world's terrorism deaths. Approximately 60% of ISIS propaganda is coming out of Sub-Saharan Africa, particularly from ISIS affiliates in Nigeria, Democratic Republic of Congo, and Mozambique. The coalition's communications working group has been working continuously to advance collaboration and capacity building among member countries to defeat ISIS propaganda, recruitment, and radicalization efforts in Africa. The coalition's Africa focus group is crystallizing our focus on the terrorist threat in the region and improving coordination of CT assistance. In collaboration with our African partners, the Africa focus group developed a four point action plan, which addresses first capacity building and specifically activities that promote border security, battlefield evidence preservation, and biometric collection. Second, countering ISIS propaganda while building community resilience. Third, improving partners' capacity to reduce illicit financing of terrorism. And fourth, countering malign influences and disinformation. The United States is supporting these efforts and has pledged $130 million to enhance civilian counterterrorism capacity in Sub-Saharan Africa, including over $22 million dollars uh, in new funding for partnerships with coastal West Africa in the past year. At the same time, we remain vigilant against the threat posed by so-called ISIS Khorasan or ISIS-K emanating from Afghanistan. The Taliban have made progress combating ISIS-K, but they've still struggled to dismantle ISIS-K's clandestine urban cells and prevent attacks on soft targets. The coalition is determined to see that Afghanistan never again becomes a safe haven for terrorists. We're addressing the threat by increasing focus, coordination, and collaboration on ISIS-K with our coalition members and augmenting our cooperation with regional partners in South and Central Asia. Core components of the U.S. strategy to address, address the ISIS-K threat include strengthening law enforcement, border security assistance, capacity building, and rehabilitation and reintegration initiatives in Central and South Asia to better track and contain any spillover of ISIS-K. That is in concert with the positive impact of humanitarian and development assistance, especially for pop populations who remain susceptible to ISIS-K recruitment. Uh, the result is a collective effort of over $30 million in new counterterrorism programming for Central Asia, coming on top of $50 million we've already invested in capacity building in the region. An especially important front 
in the fight against ISIS is in the information space. ISIS leaders promised their followers an idealized state. In reality, they delivered a brutal, morally bankrupt dictatorship. The crimes against humanity ISIS carried out include mass murder and systemic sexually exploitation of women and children. Defectors and victims alike tell horror stories of their time under the caliphate. Even the family of the leader of ISIS at its apex, apex Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, disavowed his brutality, cowardice, and hypocrisy in front of millions of viewers in a recent TV interview. Documentation and exposure of the crimes committed by ISIS members and the false promises of this failed movement's leaders are some of the best tools we have to dismantle their ideology. The U.S. and our coalition partners continue to support many actors, including governments, journalists, civil society groups, and brave individuals carrying this work forward. In the final part of my remarks, I'd like to emphasize that our coalition will continue to evolve as the ISIS threat evolves. Iraq was a, forces, a focus country when ISIS emerged, and Iraq is playing a leading role in the coalition today. Iraq is a founding member of the Global Coalition to Defeat ISIS, and its forces successfully liberated Iraqi territory from ISIS's grip. Our shared mission is succeeding. ISIS has been defeated territorially, and Iraqi forces are in a stronger position than they've ever been to suppress the remaining threat. To sustain our gains, we continue our commitment to Operation Inherent Resolve, the complementary NATO mission in Iraq, and to civilian-led counterterrorism capacity building. As we've noted publicly, the United States and the government of Iraq have begun discussions on how OIR will transition its mission to meet today's threat and ensure ISIS's en enduring defeat. Coalition partners are committed to this conversation and to helping Iraq consolidate its progress since the territorial defeat. We look forward to Iraq's continued contributions to our broader global lines of effort, including stabilization, counter messaging, and counter financing to achieve the enduring defeat of ISIS in the region and globally. In Syria, we will continue our collective response to the ISIS threat, in particular, the security, humanitarian, and counterterrorism concerns posed by the detention facilities and also the displaced persons camps. The United States continues to urge partners and allies to facilitate the re repatriation, rehabilitation, and reintegration of their nationals as quickly as possible. And the Coalition Stabilization Working Group continues to coordinate sustained investment in humanitarian and stabilization sectors in Northeast Syria. Beyond Iraq and Syria, the coalition is committed to ensuring that ISIS cannot thrive elsewhere in the world. We'll continue to address key lines of effort like capacity building in Sub-Saharan Africa and Central Asia, countering ISIS propaganda, dismantling its financial networks, ensuring foreign terrorist fighters are unable to re reach conflict zones and stabilizing liberated areas. Today, we're commemorating the fifth anniversary of the territorial defeat of ISIS. We're also thinking about the 10th anniversary of the coalition, which we will mark in September. As we approach that milestone, all coalition members want to ensure that our work is streamlined, updated, and adapted to the changing physical and ideological battlefield. As the threat has evolved and grown more diffuse, we're looking at adjustments to our configuration to make sure we're postured to anticipate and counter future threats. When coalition ministers uh, gather for their annual meeting this fall, that challenge will top the agenda. So those are my remarks. Uh, thank you, Aaron, again, for hosting me today and um, look forward to having some questions and answers with you and our, our friends. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Um, 
So before we uh, start the Q&A, for those online um, and on Zoom, if you would like to ask any questions um, during the event, please enter into the Zoom Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And for those that are um, watching the policy forum at washingtoninstitute.org. Thank you. So you uh, discussed a lot of different topics related to IS, the coalition, and everything in, in between. Um, obviously, five years ago, um, you know, uh, the issue of the Islamic State was 